Good morning. It's 7.30 on August 19th. Thank you for being with me. If you're joining me live, good morning. I'm glad you're here. If you're joining me at a different time, different day, thanks for being a part of this. I praise God for the technology that we have, that we can be together in whatever uh, time works for you. And so whether you're able to be with me every day, and I know some of you are, I praise God for that. And some of you join at different times, different days that work for you because your schedule is different. So uh, praise God, we, we can be together in that way. So um, as people are getting logged on, uh, you can see I'm still in my you know, remote location, uh, but uh, soon I'll be, I've completed my time of isolation and get to return and I'm excited about that. Uh, um, I feel fully recovered. I haven't had symptoms for several days. Uh, so now we're just kind of waiting out to the end of the isolation period. So uh, again, good to be with you. Uh, what I want to visit about over the next few days, so probably take us through Friday, is um, finding contentment in a COVID world. Okay, In a world where a microscopic virus has taken so much away from us, let's talk about contentment. Now, now, speaking personally, just for a minute, I mean, this virus has literally taken me away from my family, right? I, I haven't been home since last week. I, I can't hug my children. Uh, um, so uh, that, that's, um, that's, that's a difficult thing. Uh, some of you have been effectively isolating for several months. So you, you get this, right? You haven't seen your children maybe your adult children or maybe your grandchildren at least you haven't seen them in person maybe and, and i know in many ways you miss that human touch you know and, and i think about our um our nursing home residents and some of our um, home restricted individuals and maybe you're one of them i know many of you watch uh, different times during the week Th this is a really hard thing to be cut off from so much of the human contact and the human touch. And it, in many ways, uh, it breaks my heart. I'm sure yours as well. And like I said, it, it's, it's weird, you know, just for me personally, as I go through this, I haven't touched anybody for several days. Maybe you've experienced something like that before, maybe not. But it, it's strange what it does to you, to be unable to touch people. Now, speaking more about this this covid virus look it it, it just while well, i was thinking this is this morning covid is just a thief that's all it is right i mean it's taken trips from you it's taken sporting events from you concerts from you meetings from you conferences from you get togethers from you you, you could add to the list you, you have your own list of things that covid has stolen from you some of you maybe have lost a job or you know someone who has lost a job. And, and we can't even begin to get into the decision fatigue that many people in leadership roles are struggling through. And believe me, it is very real. When you feel like every decision you make is gonna have to be changed in 24 hours, it, it's exhausting. It's, it's absolutely exhausting. It just wears you down. So we wanna talk today about finding contentment and i'm not talking about just optimism about you know seeing the glass half full i mean that's all well and good but i'd like to go deeper than that because honestly well, sometimes the glass is just plain empty right and and optimists sometimes they're just imagining stuff in the glass that isn't there and i should know because if i were to tend one way or another, I'm an optimist, just by nature. So sometimes we just need to realize um, <laughs> optimism is not always the right answer because sometimes we're just making up things that aren't there. So I want to talk about contentment, which is, which is different than optimism. So Paul talks about contentment in the book of Philippians. And he says he's learned the secret of being content. And we're going to get to that in a couple days. So uh, in context, Paul is in prison at the time that he's writing the book of Philippians. Right? He's writing, writing to the Philippian people. He's in prison. And honestly, I can't imagine life in a Roman prison is really too swell. 
I, I just can't imagine it's a really pleasurable experience. Yet Paul says that he has learned how to have contentment despite his circumstances. And that's what we're driving after over the next few days. Okay, so contentment no matter our circumstances. Contentment in a COVID world. So here's what we're going to focus on today. Just a very simple verse from uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. Paul says this, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. In other words, his entire life is viewed through Christ. Okay, His life is defined by the life and love of Jesus for him. Before anything else is true in Paul's world, this is true. So if he survives prison, his life is defined by Christ. If he's executed, he will be welcomed into Christ's presence to await the resurrection. So before Paul reads the newspaper, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Before he faces another day in prison, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Before he considers his surroundings at all, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So really, if, if you drink this in, it's, it's pretty powerful. Jesus died for your sins and rose for your life for your sins and for your life. Your life is defined by the life and love of Jesus. If God get grants you continued life, you can dedicate it to the furtherance of his name and his gospel. If he calls you to be with him, then you're going to be free from all of your sorrows and all of your sufferings in this world. All of them. And you'll be with Christ to await the resurrection of the dead. So as we consider contentment in a COVID world, we remember Paul's insight. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So before I get up for another day of isolation, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Before you head out into a COVID world and face the risk of infection, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Before you go off to another day of school, I mean, now today's Wednesday and I can't man and you're not in school, but like before tomorrow you head off to school again. Before you have to put that mask on again and deal with all the dynamics of that. For to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Before we consider our finances or our job or, or our sports or anything like that, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now, I want you to notice here that we are not denying hard things. Okay, so Paul was in prison for crying out loud. He's not denying hard things. So we're not denying the world's curse. We're not denying sorrow and grief, suffering and tears. These are very real. COVID is real. But COVID can't take away Jesus' life and love for you. It can't. COVID cannot remove you from Christ or Christ from you. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So unless you decide to reject Christ, nothing is going to change. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. No circumstances no virus, no nothing is going to change that. And that simple but profound reality is moving us in the right direction toward contentment. Now we're going to have more to say on contentment in the next few days, but we're going to stop here to have some time to drink this in and let this percolate and really think about what we've, what we've just very simply shared today. So we want to give this a, a whole day to sink in. And I don't want to give you too much to think about. 
But today, the simple confession, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay, let's take a moment to pray. Father of mercies, we give you thanks and praise for your love toward us in Jesus Christ. It is a love we have not earned, a love we have not deserved, yet it is a love you have freely given us. And we consider life in a COVID world as we considered it, as we wrestle with all the things that have been taken from us, all the ways our lives have been changed, all the stresses, fears, anxieties, worries, and unknowns. Take us back daily to Paul's words in Philippians. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. COVID cannot change this. COVID cannot take this away from us. COVID has no power over our connection to Christ, no power over our daily fellowship with him, and no power over our eternal membership in his kingdom. So Lord, as we consider how we might know contentment in a COVID world, keep this reality in the forefront of our minds. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We are bold to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for taking time to be with me this morning, and I invite you to share this with others so they can be in prayer and, and uh, find contentment in Christ. Uh, you're always welcome to message me, text, call, email, write letters, whatever you like. I always love to hear from you, and I'll do my best to respond. Uh, but uh, thank you for walking with me through this process and uh, putting up with uh, you know, a, a different setting and a little bit different setup for me. It's, it's a learning experience because the technology doesn't always work like it's supposed to, so I praise God when it does. But um, thanks for being with me, and we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7.30.